Hi, I'm James and welcome to today's review looking at PSC Games Battle of Britain. Now this is a development of the old TSR Battle of Britain game that I bought many many years ago as a student. Um, recently picked up a new copy of it and then I, I picked this one up with not realising it was actually a remake. Um, but let's have, we'll have a look through it. I mean let's start with that cover. That is really evocative artwork. Um, you've got the Spitfires. Um, I like the fact that it's showing only a few of them. It really makes makes the point about sort of that of the, of the few. Uh, you've got a BF 109, um, and you've got the HE 111, cycle 111s. So it's it's a lovely evocative bit of artwork. So let's open it up and have a look what we've got. Nice tight fitting box there. So we have the game rules. I'll come back to them. We've got the counters, so we've got detection and non-detection, fuel counters, bombing ones, game turn, German and British markers, they're all single sided. Uh, we've got the amount of damage that's been done, um, we've got these explosion markers, we've got dogfights and intercepts, um, and we've got a big wing counter, which is reverse with an intercept. Um, now the British are broken down into groups, okay, you've got 10, 11, 12 and 13 groups and it shows what targets are within each, each of those um, ones. That is used for the German targeting and British production. We've then got the actual card, so the card holders for the different groups. So the British have got the, pull those out, the German ones out, I've got the 10, 11, 12 and 13 group um, identifies the different airfields. So we've got Boscombe Down, Pemberley, and Roborough for 10 group. Um, you've got 11 group, which is a bit bigger because they've got Hawkinge, Marshallshelm, Northweald, and Tangmere. Uh, 12 group with Coltishall, Ringway, and Wittering. Uh, Ringway is, that was, is now known as Manchester Airport, incidentally. And then you've got 13 group uh, of Catterick and Asworth. Uh, and they're the smallest one with just two. Uh, and then you have the, you have the German ones. You have three of these. You have uh, Luftflot two, three flights. Luftflot thirteen with three flights, and Luftflot five um, coming from Norway with just one flight. So that's the different pieces. Uh, so different card holders. You've got the board. Not exactly the smallest of boards, not for this table anyway. Um, but basically, you can see there, uh, it breaks the RAF down into the different groups uh, and the Germans into their three groups. Uh, you've got the radar stations showing which squares they actually affect. You've then got um, all the targets, so you've got things like um, Obviously London was probably the largest target, but you've also got targets such as Newcastle, Middlesbrough, uh, Ipswich, Plymouth, scattered around. So you've, you've got all of that. Uh, it's a nice board. It, it gives a feel very much for the classic sort of films where you see the, the fighters being, raids being pushed um, along. Um, so it, it's very atmospheric again. It's a nice solid board, heavy mountain. Um, I quite like that. You've got the the dice, okay, and we'll all sort of we'll look at how they're used in a minute. But you've got British dice, which are white, and German dice, which are black. I'll explain why there's different ones on that. Uh, we've got the aircraft stands, complete with the stickers to put on them. And we've mentioned aircraft, so we get the different aircraft. Now the British, you get. Um, Spitfires. Um, I appreciate that most that a lot of the aircraft in the Battle of Britain were Hurricanes and so on, but the Spitfires represent them well enough. The German aircraft, there's a bit more variation. When we look at the German ones, we need to split them into fighters and bombers to start off with. And you've got BF 109s. I know they tend to get called Messerschmitts, but I'm a bit of a purist for that. So you've got a couple of them. You've got some Heinkels. HE 111s, uh, you've got a BF 110 twin engine, probably two of them, my apologies. Um, 
they're not all Heinkels because I've looked at the wing shape. Um, this is where I would need to do a little bit of research as to what as to what they are. Um, you got, a, I think that's a Dornier. So you've got a nice range. They, for game terms, they make no difference. Um, they're all used um, just as representative. Now they're made of a hard plastic. I know there were issues with some of the uh, kickstart versions of this where there were, there were real issues with some of the aircraft um, but these are quite nice. Um, I'm not sure what scale they are. Um, I'm guessing looking at the size and we've got one to three hundred. You've got your mission cards. Um, you can see there there's quite a few of these. Uh, let's just, let's open that up. I really w keep saying on all these videos, one day I'm going to remember to actually open the plastic first. Um, one day I'm going to remember that. So, the mission cards. These these are the bulk of this deck. Um, but we've got a few things mixed in. We've got the, the British squadrons and their values. Uh, you've got all the traditional things. Hurricanes, gladiators. You've got some German aircraft in there. Um, Blenheims, so it's it's good actually for that. But Ju 88s that was the type I couldn't remember. Um, and you can see there you've got all the targets and you've got all the different aircraft split split down. So we have all of those there. And the backs of the card tell you what they are. If you notice the different colours, uh, they're for the different um, RAF flights. And the German cards uh, again, there is some differentiation. Uh, with them. Why they've mixed them in like that I'm not, not too sure. Uh, let's open up the, the other deck. Oh, that one opened a bit better. So you can see there again the German deck is split into the different types and you will need to go through those. Um, and when you look at how many German cards there are it does emphasize the um, how the RAF felt when, you, when this occurred. You, you will feel when you're playing this very much um, light the RAF, feeling very outnumbered. And then we've got the rules. Now the rule book is a lot thicker than the, the old one. Uh, you know, nice little little quotes. You know, I myself have taken command of Luftwaffe's Battle for Britain by Hermann Goering. Um, gives you a nice situational briefing. Um, I think we forget how this wasn't a preordained victory. You know, it was something that um, you did they didn't know at the time how it was going to come out and I think that's something that's easy to forget when you look at history so it talks about assembling everything um, show, it talks about the different group displays um, the production track and the German targets uh, knocked out markers that was what they were I couldn't remember what they were for so there are a couple of minor changes um, compared to how the, how the original game ran. In the original game, uh, you had unlimited interceptions in a turn. Now, in this turn, you've got the options of dogfighting or intercepts. Um, and later in the battle, you can actually use the big wing, which that's only used in one scenario. Uh, the big wing was the attempt to basically throw large numbers of fighters at single raids. Um, so you have that, you've got ace markers, that's what the British and German ones are for, um, because they can actually then um, improve the standard. Now we mentioned the dice, the British dice has got three German symbols, two blank and one British, uh, and the reverse for the Luftwaffe. Now the way it works is you actually count up how many points are in it, and different aircraft are worth different points. So, for example, the RAF, um, I've got a value of three, okay, um, so they would roll three dice for one of those squadrons. Um, and for every German symbol, that's a hit on a German aircraft, for a British symbol, a hit on a British one. Um, same with the, uh, the Luftwaffe. Now, if you throw in a large number of um, aircraft in a German raid and it's hit by a small amount of RAF, the odds are the RAF will get shot down, but sometimes the Germans can actually result in effectively a friendly fire because it's just such a target-rich environment. So, 
shows you how to set up the game and you can see there that really gives that look of um, the plotting stations. So turn sequence is pretty simple, advance the scenario turn, British production and repairs so the RAF can try and repair the um, aircraft airfields and radar stations so you roll the dice um, and that lets you see how, how much you can repair uh, and that's based on the city's production value so cities while they're not particularly um, game winning losing them is going to result in losing your ability to repair things so you've got to balance it um, so you then go on to the German mission assignment um, the German player shuffles the missions and draws 10 and assign one to each flight. Uh, now that means there's going to be three left over um, and they're kept down, kept in front for later turns. So the German player has got a very realistic thing. You have to hit these targets but you can hold three back. So you can adjust the strategy a little, it's not completely random. Um, so nice and straightforward. Um, you then get the squadron alert, so you basically then, um, the Germans start moving in, they picked up on radar and the RAF can start moving towards them. Um, so it, it's nice and straightforward. Um, as obviously you start knocking holes in the radar chain, it makes it harder to pick them up. So, very straightforward, basically they can move up to three spaces. Uh, for, so it's it's not hard. This is slightly different from the earlier version where the Luftwaffe player um, instead of can move up to can move up to five um, using the fuel token. We it used to be that you had numbers one to five and you vary depending on what you're using. So it's, it's been simplified a little that way. Uh, the RAF however doesn't have to keep track of fuel, which is, is a major benefit. Um, which is pretty realistic because the British could just put down and refuel at other stations if necessary. So you then get once both players have moved, the battle and the bombing, um, so you have the initial firefights or dogfights and then you move on to the, the bombing. Um, the RAF then head for home um, so they can actually, if you want, turn to base. Um, the Luftwaffe then bombs the, the target, British use the anti any anti-aircraft fire um, and the Germans then have to try and get home. So it's fairly straightforward. Um, it, you do, it is a, there is a nice little addition for up to four players where you can actually um, adjust it so you split the command. Um, that's quite realistic for getting a, a very simple um, chain of command going. You could even put, a, I suppose, a, not a playing player, but one who's actually telling them what the tactics are above that. But you no, know, most gamers they would usually ignore that. So you've got various scenarios. You've got the Channel Battle, the Canal Camp, uh, the Duel of Eagles, um, Adler and Griff, mangled the pronunciation of that. London's Burning, which is the Blitz, uh, and that brings in the big wing rules. Um, and it does talk about actually making it more historical. Uh, there's a historical commentary as to how it actually went and then some designers notes um, and you've got some little scenario scorecards just to help you keep track um, it's a nice little game I'm looking forward to playing it again like I said I played the original version um, and thoroughly enjoyed that and this has got a few more refinements just, just to add to the um, the realism little things like the options of dogfighting or intercepting and I've not gone into that um, I might do a video on that at some point, um, but definitely nicer, nicer uh, miniatures with it. Uh, I love the board. I just, I just think it's very atmospheric. This is a lovely bit of nostalgia for me for this. So hopefully that's been useful for you, and I'll see you soon for another review.